afternoon. Thank you everyone for coming. Thank you to Roman and to all the organizers of RootedCon for inviting me. Apologies for the detail. This is often the case. Well, we always some technical <laughs> issues and then we should not forget that Roman's, uh, well, Mac PC is not perfect. Okay, welcome to the presentation about hacking shared Urban mobility system. I focused on skates because I don't have a driving license. I'm not planning to get a driving license, and I got interested in those um, these skates, and I found it very interesting because they became more and more popular because we are at a conference of hackical, uh, ethical hacking. I have to say, well, my disclaimer, my disclaimer is that I will not provide any, mm, well, this information is purely informative, and this is just for you, who, those who want to audit these IoT systems. We just would like to sh give you some basis, some fundamentals for you to do that. So this is within reach and this is affordable. And even if you are working in the cyber security field, with this, I uh, would like to recommend you not to commit any crime, but just to have good time and to share information, which is the spirit of this community. My name is Neto Sanchez, I work for GMB, uh, the Department of Ethical Hacking. I do a bit of DIY. I am fond of uh, radio. I do cybersecurity hacking. This is about playing around with things, hacking, and see how far we can get. Why this presentation? What is the main motivation? Well, I Primarily, I just want people not to be afraid of auditing embedded systems. But you may think that you can not do anything with them, but you can do uh, things with it. I've been a system administrator, then I moved on to cyber security. I'm not good at programming, and because I can't, well, I'm stubborn, I like to throw things at the wall when something uh, doesn't go well. So this is a brief summary of my presentation. It is divided into parts. One is the an introduction. So we will be talking about urban skates. And then we will um, tell you how you may audit this system. OK, state of the art, where do we come from, what we go to. First of all, interest in an attacker uh, of an attacker in this type of skates. First of all, uh, stealing and selling parts as scrap. These are two ads in Wallapop. So we have a company providing this uh, service, a legal company, and then there may be a bastard wanting to go against us, and then they just steal the skates and then they sell them, sell them as uh, scrap. Okay, these are screenshots from last Monday. So the material that we can see in some of the photographs hides out whether it has been stolen or not. But this full escape, electrical escape, we see that there is no uh, folding system in place. I sent it out to the relevant authorities when I saw that because I didn't like that. But yes, an attacker may steal things physically to make a profit out of it. And then the stealing and the use of the actual and the selling of the actual uh, skate. They do not even disassemble it and sell parts uh, separately, or just the person who takes it and without paying for it and using it. And then we have the most ethical, ethical thing, that is to say, using it without paying it. You just get one of those skates, you just uh, travel or take you whatever you want to it to take you to. You are not uh, stealing any 
uh, equipment, but you, this is detrimental to the company because the company is not making any money out of your use of it. How does that work? And as I say, this can be extrapolated to other uh, vehicles. So we have a controller and we have an engine, continuous current, uh, batteries, accelerator, brake, and some electronics to control the loading port. That's it. That's what an electric skateboard is about. Everything, uh, the core is at the controller. You may go to a shopping center, buy a, one of those skateboards, and then using it around the city. Actually, these uh, skateboards are quite simple. If you have one of those Chinese cheap ones, I encourage you to open it and find a rectangular, well, a Chinese rectangular controller, and you may replace that with other controllers that you may buy on AliExpress or on Amazon uh, so that you have a higher power. So they're very easy to repair as well. This is a very simple circuitry. This is what we, we used to do at the school. We have this battery pack, this accelerator, and uh, the only level of sophistication, so to speak, comes from the controller. What has happened with these rental electric skateboards? Well, they have taken an electric skateboard and they have added an IoT module connected to the controller and they have programmed the controller. Well, the original one comes in with the Bluetooth, therefore the Bluetooth module of the actual skateboard is being used. But the general thing here is that they have added a module with the GSM and G 4G, with Bluetooth and GPS and have fit it onto the skateboard just to control the time where the, the starts and the time when it finishes. So it is programmed for, for it to have buzzer and to make noise. So it making a noise is not a problem. Even if you're using it in the street and it's being noisy, no one comes to you and trying to find out what is wrong. Other electric skateboards have uh, like a really loud uh, hook and it is like really, really noisy. So this is the controller of the engine. This is from Amazon. This is a generic one for a scooter and this is a mini bot. And this is the uh, one that we will be focusing on. So those of you who know nothing about electronics and you think that this is just a set of uh, cables, complicated, messy cables, but this is a controller. Controller controlling communication with buses to see whether you're using the accelerator or the brake. And those that Linebot has its own Bluetooth module, the commercial ones that you may buy by uh, can help you block it in from the mobile phone to set maximum speed to see the number of kilometers that have been traveled and here we have two H bridges to control the microcontroller so I will not explain to you what a MOSFET is because I'm sure that you are looking forward for the conference to Finish, okay. So what has been the evolution regarding these uh, segways? Well, the first ones were Segway 9 bot, the foldable version with an IoT device from different companies. So what some companies have designed their own IoT. But there came a time that someone realized that having these uh, foldable segways was a bit risky. Well, I've always seen that, I've always noticed that. 
Well, they most of them disappeared from the street. Nowadays, there are no companies offering this type of uh, segways. And it is, uh, well, I just warn you, I just want to warn you not to do anything that you will regret. The good thing about it is that you can, there are replacement parts or spare parts for every single thing. And the problem was the hinge. The hinge had kind of like, um, it kind of uh, loosened itself and it was dangerous. I bought one myself and once uh, unintendedly, I could see that it was kind of uh, the hinge was being uh, loose and it was it was loose and it was dangerous. Then that was followed by a Segway 9 bot SNCS. It was fixed, it was not foldable. And they also manufactured their own IoT. So tomorrow if you want to set up a company you call nine bots and then you order 10,000. They give you a knob, they give you a logo, and you just arrange it for yourself. That's it. Roman, help. What did I do? Well, I plugged in USB before. Okay, I leave. Leave you alone. So you are like one of the uh, teachers that had it the best. Okay. All right. If you give me the password, I can do it myself. Well, the segways were quite right. I found them quite stable. And now they have found another solution to prevent them from being sold at scrap. Now they're using segways for which there are no spare parts. Well, they are often bought in China, and some of them are really ugly. You may notice that I have removed all the brand names. I sent emails to some companies asking them whether they wanted me to bring some of their subways, but they were not interested at all. They didn't even answer. Subway 9Bot E2. So you see that this uh, foldable plate is missing, and it has the it is fitted with the IOT of the company. Well, th the companies decided not to offer these well foldable segways. So these were the ones that were put on rental. This is version one. This is the IOT for the segway. So this is a horn. These, they come with the original IoT from Segway, and these ones have the new uh, IoT. They have also added, included a Bluetooth screen. They have embedded a GPS, and then it has this noisy horn here. So this is the way it sounds, and then an alarm is triggered. So the, the headquarters of the so a company gets an alarm and finds out about uh, mm, misbehavior. So this is version number two. I did not see it in Madrid. I just saw it in Zaragoza. This is version two of the commercial subway, which is foldable, but the foldable part has been kind of removed or blocked. If these gets folded as you drive it, it's very dangerous. You may fall and you may kill yourself. So it is good fun that you 
get one of these you don't even need to do any reverse engineering no nothing because all the data are here you just place it upside down and that's it okay so now the latest uh, segways and i think these are the ones about madrid now some of them are ugly or at least i find them ugly does anyone like these ones well i'm sure they are very cheap look i could build it myself so these ones are similar to the commercial versions but when you try to look for the name of the manufacturer that says underneath are not as ordinary as normal they are for corporate use you cannot find any spare parts and they are very visible and these ones are very noticeable especially this one here this is not a skateboard this is a tank the weight of it is 25 or 30 kilograms you can jump on it and nothing goes wrong it is steel this is not even aluminum i guess that the cost have gone down a lot shock absorption is okay so if you truly like to do crazy things i would like to invite you to try them out of course after paying for the use of it so as i told you they came in with different iot devices we have these two subways from the same company with two different iot devices in the beginning many of this company used iot devices from third-party companies, but at the end of the day, Segway IoT device is uh, mostly used. It is not a good idea, it's tamperized, and it is full of plastic inside. That's what I've been told. An advantage of it is that all the documentation is available because it has been approved by the US FCC. You may download the whole document to see the frequencies. This is an IoT that was manufactured in Romania. Everything that you see here that looks like silicon, that looks a bit cheap. Those are skateboards bridge there as commercial ones. They were drilled and then they placed this one in here and they sealed it with silicon the end the result was very cheesy so the first ones were foldable here you should have a tap of it was removed uh, for security reasons and f f to prevent it from being uh, stolen again three other skateboards and then the iot with the horn there has been an improvement in security the lever offered by the skateboard companies they fitted it with this type of uh, cage around the battery because I guess that some people stole the batteries. These batteries, 9 volt batteries, were 130 euros. So I'm sure that someone, after so much stealing, they put the battery in this cage and then bolted it with 4 volts. Now, IoT devices inside. Everyone wants to see what's inside. Why do we have a photograph with a Soviet Union uh, flag? Well, I will tell you more about it. There is a logic to it. This is one of the owners. Lazia presentation. Did you upload it to the internet, Roman? Well, hardware hacking presentation. I just didn't want to repeat the content that I shared last year. So we have the Bluetooth, the microcontroller, the GPS antenna, Pectel. Pectel is F25, it's a 4G, 2G, 3G, and GPS module. We have our GPS antenna, telephony antenna, and if there is telephony there, 
there is something missing. Well, we, everyone is missing out a SIM card. Well, no, it comes in with this uh, SIM, which is uh, SIM such as any uh, a mobile phone SIM, but to be welded on the board. Well, you may remove it, you may weld it, you may mount it on, on several tools, but it is not very easy. So we have these pins for reflashing, for debugging, for the serial port. It is always good and it's always appreciated in reverse engineering. This is a bigger module that comes in a bigger uh, green box, comes with this telephony module. Pins are not that well ident identified and mobile telephony and GPS uh, pins uh, receive information through YouTube. I don't know why YouTube is fitted. I understand that this is a generic design and they just left it there. Some companies in the beginning did not fit any communication device. It was you with your mobile phone who provided information to the cloud as to where you picked up your skateboard and where did you left it. They just fitted the original skateboards with a GPS device. This is a WeTrack that you may buy on AliExpress. They are not expensive and they perform well. I'm not being paid by them, by WeTrack, but if you really want to fit in a GPS to bike or a car, you may use these ones. And as I said in the beginning, the only thing that you could do was just to use your mobile phone. So the users had to spend their data to provide information to the company about the traveling time, etc. So this is a slide that I used last year. So the IoT and the actual skateboard has always been protected through safety bolts and sealed cases. So we have a buy a beautiful tool kit that we may buy at nine and a half euros. So any security bolts that you may find uh, can be easily unbolted. So there is a company manufacturing keys. If you go and type in proprietary uh, bolt company, you will find the name of the company. Then there is another problem. That is to say, when manufacturers decide to put this in the circuitry to make your life more difficult. This is from a cheap uh, Chinese commercial skateboard, and a friend of mine was told that his skateboard could not be fixed. And then he said, oh, I'll give it away to you. And I said, yeah, give it to me. I have necessary bollocks to do it. The first thing that I did was to dismantle it beautiful and it came in it had a controller inside and then it was glued to the uh, actual skateboard the controller was dead and we bought a controller on the uh, on Amazon 50 euros we just cut cables we recabled it and then it went back to operation then I I mounted the controller box and I could see this gray plastic awful uh, box and I said okay I will remove it then I took like a small screw driver and then I with lots of patience I removed all that plastic up until I found or I reached the controller when I see one of those boards and I see that everything has been documented I always appreciate it 
but at the end of the day, the problem is that the component had been poorly welded at the factory. I re-welded it and the controller went back into operation. So well, try to fix things. Are we talking about skateboards only? No, not really. As long as I have a battery, a controller, and wheels, I can use that for many applications. One of the latest uh, devices out there that I did not try yet is this thing, which is kind of like an electrical bike, but actually it is a small rental uh, motorbike or scooter. And then we have this other thing here, which is one of those uh, caddies or wheelchairs for disabled people. You can rent them. You can rent them at Sol here in Madrid, Madrid city center. So I can see you looking at that and I can see you very interested in that. So they look very strange. You are right. And at the end of the day, what this is a golf caddy and coming with the battery wheels and everything that I've just told you can be extrapolated to many other vehicles. So the only thing that I could afford with my cybersecurity salary was a skateboard and I live in a 17 square meter flat and I cannot bring in any of those to my home. Well, potential attacks. First of all, replacement of original parts with spare parts. You may think that First thing that may come to mind is like, okay, I get one of these, I replace the original part with the spare parts, and then the, the skateboard will continue to work. No, that is not it. The part manufacturers and the importers of uh, skateboards are not that is stupid. So all the spare parts that they sell come with no serial number and they are ready to be fitted in a workshop so that at the workshop the zero, zero, zero serial number is replaced with the serial number of the original part that has been broken and is being replaced. There is a forum on the internet, a scooter talk, offering tools that allow you to do this kind of thing just in case a friend of you breaks the skateboard, doesn't need to take it to servicing, you can fix it for your friends. And the next possible attack would be the reflashing of controllers. Because the images of the controllers of Segway 9 bot were filtered. So anyone could just dismantle everything after leaking of those images. Okay, hold, yeah, okay, I get it. And you could easily refresh it. And then you could have, a, you can turn a stolen skateboard into a fully commercial skateboard. But when you are driving SNNC skateboard, that type of uh, skateboard is detected. And well, this is only valid when you use your mobile phone to start it, okay? They are working really hard to add security to it. This is about the physical security of the skateboard. And now let's talk about IoT. First of all, Bluetooth. This is a controller for Bluetooth Segway 9 bot. Looks very nice, isn't it? We see this module here. You just don't need to get one and to dismantle it. But AliExpress tells you about the type of controller that that is. So it is a Bluetooth microcontroller. So the three microcontrollers of Segway Nanbot. Each battery comes with the microcontroller, Bluetooth comes with another microcontroller, and then we have the microcontroller of the Segway. All that has to be well linked tight, otherwise you will have a failure, you would not be able to start it. So how can we audit the Bluetooth? You can sniff the communications, that's very good, when uh, they, these parts are not yours. But in this case, you have your cell phone with the Bluetooth. If it's an Android, you can go to the settings, you can enable a registry, and I think that 
it has some kind of misleading name. You have to enable the register of Bluetooth. Well, that's a sniffer, and that's it. In the end, you, ha you are uploading the uh, Bluetooth communication. You can see it here. And the first ones that are be were being activated by Bluetooth, well, that was a command. It was on the serious port. There was a, a command that would say, unblock and work. And it says, well, now you're going to unblock. We could sniff that command. And with uh, Raspberry, uh, with uh, any module, we could tell it to look for look for these controllers to unblock them. It could turn, it could switch on all the controllers on the street, for example, we could be laughing for quite a long time. Thank God they removed that Bluetooth part in almost every device. Out of the few companies that are providing service with Beanabot, uh, they don't have Bluetooth activated. There was a vulnerability that said that you could switch it off. So anybody with such a skate that you could see on the road, you could, you could uh, switch it off. And if you're lucky, he won't kill himself. No, this is, this is fun. This could be funny, but maybe you can kill someone doing such a thing. So, I never, sometimes I don't like to explain these things. Everybody that are here in the community and deliver speeches, we have a responsibility. We are explaining things in a responsible way. Because there are things that are quite um, dangerous, and if it's dangerous, we got to tell you, because we are, we are growing old, but, well, we're all mature, but, but this is why... I have this disclaimer. We're going to explain a GPS, a GSM, etc. And my, well, I have to, I need to know the law. And both these bands and the re reception of, a cell of mobile communications is a crime against uh, the general telecommunications law. It's 20 million euros of fine. Nothing happens. So nobody will go to, ch nobody will go to jail. But you need to pay 20 million euros, so I don't think um, it's a good idea. And same happens with uh, cell phone lines, cell phone uh, bans. So this could be a crime too. You could you could try this either at a Faraday cage in a lab, or if you don't ha have a cybersecurity minimum salary, because it. It costs some hundreds of millions of uh, thousands of euros. Sorry, uh, for example, a cardboard with uh, some aluminium paper works really good. Just be sure not to um, not to emit anything outside. We have a 2G network here. But, well, this was really cool. Let's have a look at this. We're interested on the cell phone link or the IoT device with the network. How, well, how the rest of the network works? Well, we don't care very much. So, what can we, what, what can we do with 2G? We can do passive hearing, and as we will upload this uh, on the internet, if you want a presentation, I can hand it to you so that you can have the URLs, and you can encrypt the uh, signals. We can decrypt it, and we have TCP IP communication in the end. In fact, it is very funny to do this because you can see how sometimes we trust a lot on the network layer. The micro counters have no capability of sending an HTTPS. So people say, well, as this goes through 4G or 2G and the communication is safe, I'll send in plain HTTP. So no worries. I'm the security comes through the network layer. No, that's not the point. And uh, here we have the active, uh, the active part. We can do it, although you shouldn't, unless it's uh, quite a controlled environment, a Faraday cage, and you would be emitting in the range of uh, of an operator. And if you occupy their spectrum, they would get pissed off. So first thing, you should set a fake station so the device connects to us. And at, as everything is TCP IP, we are interested on the internet. 
um, walkway. So we could do it with uh, Osmocom. It's a very cool project of free telephony. If you want to get seriously in this, uh, you can have a look at it, and otherwise you can otherwise you can take a blade RF with a Yate BTS, uh, and there you can see how to create a fake telephony station. You can use two cell phones and you can call to yourself. Don't do this at a public place because if you uh, if you have uh, two cell phones in your ears laughing, well, people really look at you in a very weird way. Well. Um, this is 2G, we won't get into 3G. I don't know who designed 3G, but it's not a good idea. And we have the mobile data information, the uh, um, SRSLTE, etc. And we need some SIM cards that we know the PIN code of because they authenticate uh, mutually. So we need, we understand this in a lab environment. A company has hired us to audit it, so there's no problem in having the IT of this company and we were using a lab sim. We need that SRS LTE, LTE, it has an email list, and I usually complain on that list. We have the sim and a USRP 210. There's another amazing thing uh, by Pedro Cabrera who told me. And uh, out of this SRS LTE, you can do it through an USRP Mini. So if you've been able to do so, I invite you, uh, you can, I'll pay you all the beer you want, but please tell me. You can do a man in the middle. We need two uh, USRP P210, and these devices are expensive. So I've been able to have one, so having two would be very difficult. Here you have the paper of, the, of last year's Black Hat, and it really has uh, documentation about how to do a 4G man in the middle. You're emulating the station of uh, um, the telephony and you are emulating the customer against the real station. So everything goes through you. So this is what Villarejo uh, sh uh, case did. That's that one million, uh, that million euro suitcase, this is what it did. So GPS, uh, there was a demonstration of uh, how um, easy it was to fit, to forge GPS and if anybody here has hard hack RF there is a board that is on the hack RF and there is a version by the Chinese guys and you put the coordinates in SD and he can make it up be careful with GPS okay it's, it's in it looks like being something stupid. It was like hack RF work can play a little bit, but that of the GPS, well, it's prepared. Well, our cell phones have a filter and an amplifier because GPS has a very low intensity. This emits a much higher powerful. You can fry on the reception devices of somebody's cell phone, and you are emitting at such power that it's possible that a plane or a place nearby can ca can catch your fake signal I uh, maybe you could be um, teasing uh, critical facilities so in terms of radio frequency be careful okay be careful because that radio frequency is highly regulated and just spoil it because otherwise you could you should pay 20 million I don't know you but uh, I it's not very good to have such a fine and well, I would like to say thank you to the organization. Thanks for being here, even with a broken uh, rib. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks to Vladimir from Scooter Talk um, because all the pictures with the communist flag. So thanks for being that crazy. Uh, Enrique and Luis Turis from the University of Zaragoza. Luis is uh, the author of this work. So we help him do this work, and he makes an audit of bikes. These bikes for rent that have an insurance, sorry, that have a lock that can be open, and it was they were they were quite securitized. Well, and the piece of work is quite interesting. Well, thanks to Pedro, the family, Pamperfus, Rodriguez, David, and Fernando. Just thanks for holding all the all this bullshit about skates and so on and so forth. 
So, thank you very much. Thanks for coming along. Don't forget to play with hardware. Hardware is fun. And play with it. Here you have my Twitter. If you have any further question, and I don't know if anybody has any question uh, during the speech. Thank you. Good afternoon. Thank you very much. Well, it's uh, it's something that I consider important. I think that the approach of the economic fine is not the right one. First of all, we have to say, well, it's not good and it's dangerous. I think that should be the approach. That that's it's just a suggestion. Thanks for the remark because money maybe it's not a problem. Well, oh, I mean, if you if any here. If anybody here has 20 million euros, please raise up your hands. But yeah, thank you. But it's a very good remark. Yeah, it's dangerous. I mean, here, for example, here we have an advantage with the demos that we've performed. If there's a uh, bad cell coverage, well, things don't work because we are emitting at a very low power. But sometimes we are not aware of what we have in our hands. Maybe we can affect people. There are military bases uh, nearby. For example, if you uh, rise a hack or F, maybe you're interfering with a plane or something. And one thing is to play with uh, with electronics and hacking and so on and so forth. And another thing is to play with lives. I would like to make a remark there. Maybe what we have to do is to have areas where people can train with these things without um, making up that they have uh, gone to another country um, and they were here near, near, in the same neighborhood. There are some universities that have some Fardai cages, but you need to ask for it. Um, they, they let you have it. It should at the CMT website. There should be somewhere where you could uh, request a test, and we would avoid that criminal path because we are all highly responsible and accountable, right? Another more questions. So, I've seen that there was a line on the presentation that said command and control, but you didn't see it, didn't say anything. No, basically because I wasn't able to get the snapshots of the guinea bot, and uh, this is what they have, a database, a panel, to see where the skateboards are, and I found some skates um, cut in two. So I thought that you had a version of the drone that you had infected the skates all over the place and no 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 okay 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 no you haven't done it anyway I was I was going to generate my own zombie skates but no I didn't do it this time so no more questions great so thank you Ernesto okay so we just uh, we will. Close